Hey everybody, I'm Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and at the nursery, I love going out, finding cool, unusual plants, figuring out how to propagate them and make sure that we have those available when you come to see us down on the farm. From Swiss cheese plant to string of pearls, string of turtles, you name it, it's awesome. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I thought maybe it was time that I show you some of the tips and tricks on how we propagate all of these so that you can come down to the farm, find your favorite one, bring it home, propagate it for yourself, and then share it with your friends and family. String of pearls. This is pretty simple. So um, we're just going to take one of the ends of the string of pearls. We'll just get a, a pair of scissors, could be a pair of clippers, and we're going to clip the end of it off. We'll end up with, um, you know, a couple inch long string of pearls. I like taking at least one off the base. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take a um, kind of like a seedling mix would work good. You don't want something too coarse because you want the soil to stay fairly wet for a little bit. So we're going to poke the bottom of this right into the soil mixture, kind of pack it around a little bit. Now here's the trick. You, you don't want this to dry out for a little while. If it dries out, any of those little roots that are starting to come on it, um, they'll die. So you want to keep it moist for, I'd say, at least three to four weeks. Not super wet, just moist. That gives a chance for those roots to get in there and get established. And that's all you got to do. String of pearls is pretty simple. Um, let's go to something else that I also, um, it's not too hard. Let me show you what we got. All right, this little guy is Pilea peppermoides. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. Um, this plant was super hard to find a couple years ago. You could pay up for $40 for a little four inch. Um, they're a little easier to find. And one of the reasons is because they're pretty easy to propagate. So what I do, you'll oftentimes find them in a four inch. I potted um, this guy up in an eight inch pot because it sends out these little root fingers out and shoots up starts around the outside of the plant. Oftentimes they call this plant the friendship plant because it's so easy to propagate and share with all of your friends. So we're going to take one of these kind of small guys coming up around the outside of the main mother plant and we're just going to kind of work around, make sure we try and get, there we go, a little bit of roots off, um, off the little pup coming off the side of it. And then all it takes is putting that guy right down in our soil again. We'll pack it down around. And again, same thing. I want to keep this nice and moist so that those roots get a chance to get out and get established. And before you know it, you're going to have lots of friendship plants to give out to all of your friends. Um, those were, were kind of easy. Let's try something a little more difficult. All right, the next plant that we're going to look at is Echeverias. A really cool succulent, um, and it, it, there's a wide range of different types of Echeverias. I'm going to show you a couple different ones today, and it depends on which type of Echeveria you're working with on how we're going to try and propagate it. The first one that we have here is Afterglow, a beautiful color. The nice thing about it is once you pinch the top out, it kind of breaks into all these little pups. If you can get one of these with little pups, it's super easy to propagate. So we're going to take one of those pups off the side with our pair of scissors again. Uh, I'm going to take all these kind of little bottom leaves off of it um, so that we end up with like a little mini Echeveria. We take those little guys off and we end up with like a little tiny stem on the bottom. And we're going to do just like we did with our other succulents. We're going to put them right into that kind of seedling mix potting soil and we're going to keep it damp for a couple weeks. This is Afterglow, works the same way. Another one is Violet Queen. You can see it has lots of pups, but some of my other that I really love, um, this guy is called Purple Pearl. Um, but you can see it has two pups here, but it, it doesn't like to divide very easily that way. So what we do is take leaf cuttings. So um, we just take one of the bottom leaves right off of the little guy. And one of the tricks is I want to make sure that the leaves come right off of the base of the stem. If it goes down too far on it, it won't work. But you can actually take this leaf and make some babies. So I've got some in the back here. Let me grab them and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so we have our little leaf cutting, right? So I just got like a, a nursery tray that we use around the farm and I put some of that um, seedling mix kind of like an inch or two layer in the bottom 
And we're going to take this leaf and you can just lay it on top of the soil. Um, but here's, here's the down part. Um, I have some here that I started. I did these leaves in December. It's now April. It takes a while. You've got to be patient with this, but each individual leaf will create, um, little babies kind of right at the tip of them. Um, I leave these sitting on top of the soil so that the roots, let me grab one of these guys here that's got some roots in it. You can see here, let's grab this guy. <laughs> that's all roots for that little baby guy down there. And um, now we'll take and we'll transplant this uh, into a, like a little bigger pot. And before you know it, you've got tons of leaf cuttings. It takes a while. One of the tricks that I've noticed when doing these is again, once you start to see the little baby start to appear at the end of the leaves, really wet the soil down, keep it moist because we want those little root hairs to go down into the soil, soak up that water and get started. It takes a while, but for some varieties, this is the only way you can do it. Um, we spend a lot of time at the farm trying to figure that out, figure out which ones work the best ways. So come on out to the farm. We've got tons of different cool and unusual plants for you to pick from. We'll help you figure out how to best propagate them. We've got some tools and tricks here to help you do that. Uh, it's one of my favorite things to do and I'm happy to share it with you. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. I'm just getting started showing you how to propagate different plants. We'll have more videos coming soon and we look forward to seeing you down at the nursery as soon as you can. Thanks.